Okay, in this second video, we're going to take a look at uh, the next steps of our chair building process, which is going to be to duplicate this side piece over to the other side and to build the slats that go across the seat. Now, one of the great parts about Maya is that it really allows you only to do half of the work, meaning that normally you'd have to build one, go ahead and build the other, or at the very least build one and duplicate it and move it over to the other side. Maya really doesn't like you doing that. Maya says that, well, let's take that task and automate it for you. Uh, in this case, by building only one half of the model, of course, I'm only going to have to spend half of the necessary time to actually create this project. Now, there are a couple little edits here I might want to do, such as these back vertices. I right-clicked, I entered the vertex component mode, and I'm going to nudge these forward a little bit so they seem a little bit more straight towards the bottom. I'm just sort of aligning my edges. Now, a lot of this probably won't matter because these will be masked by the uh, sort of vertical poles that support the chair for the arms and legs of the chair. But I do want to try and get those straighter if possible. Now, what we can do, several options. One is I can hit Control D, which as we previously looked at is the hotkey for duplicate. And you'll see I actually have a duplicate of this bar. Well, right now, if I go into my channel box, I'll see that on the x-axis, which is the horizontal axis across the seam, my bar was moved over 4.164 units, meaning that if I move this precisely to a value of negative 4.164 units, and here I've actually typed that in in the channel box, I can hit enter, and I've got a pretty straight forward, straight over duplicate. And that's, of course, one way to actually duplicate this over. There are many other additional ways, though, and I think one of the most important things to actually examine with Maya is the duplicate special command. Now, with the duplicate special command, instead of having to come in and manually move this at the end, I can send this all over to the other side all at once at the same time that I actually duplicate it. To do this, however, all of the values that I've set here, the translates, the rotates, and the scale, I need to be able to reset out those values so that Maya forgets the position of this and then it bases its transformation pivot point not from the center of the object but from the center of the world. To reset out my transformations I go to modify and I'm going to choose reset transformations but watch what happens. When I do this my channels go back to 0 and 1 showing that this has not changed but it also has reset all of the modifications that I made to the form. So I hit Control-Z to undo that. What we need to see is that before I reset my transformations, I should actually go to Modify and choose Freeze Transformations. Freeze Transformations is going to make Maya forget that anything actually happened to this shape, and it will sort of make Maya think that this was the original shape when I created the object. You'll notice that the pivot point is still in the center of this elongated rectangular cube, and you'll also see that my channel box now goes back to zeros and ones, as it should be. It hasn't been moved, it hasn't been scaled, and it, or hasn't been rotated, and it hasn't been scaled. Now if I go to Edit and choose Duplicate Special, the hotkey for this, you see, is Control capital D, which is going to be Control shift D on the keyboard. I'm going to go to the Options box. Now, in this Options box, you're going to notice that under Scale, I've set my scale to negative 1. In a second, what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this inside out to the other side. Well, you'll notice here my pivot point is still in the center of my object. If I duplicate this right now and scale it inside out, nothing is going to happen. But if I go to Modify, after I've frozen my transformations, I say Reset the transformations, my pivot point jumps back to the center. And if my scale is at negative 1 on the x-axis, and again, these are x, y, z, they are completely alphabetically across that dialog box. 
If I scale it negative 1 on the x-axis to go from the positive to the negative, all I have to do is hit apply. It duplicates it and moves it over for me all at once. And that's going to be a major, major benefit to me as I create this piece. Well, I have to create some slats for this as well, the straight across slats that we have here. And I have to make nine of them. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take this front brace piece, instead of making a whole new piece, I'm going to take this piece and hit Control D and duplicate it. I'll grab the Move tool and pull it up. Hit R to grab the Scale tool, and I will flatten this out. Maybe elongate it out just a little bit as well. I hit W to get the Move tool. And R for the Scale tool again. And W for the Move tool one more time. And what I'm looking at doing is creating a slab that goes straight across this section. Well, I now have to make this dip a little bit more pronounced. So I'm going to right click on my object and choose Vertex. Drag a selection over these vertices and move these down so that they roughly match the form. If I look at this from the side, however, and I'm going to hit spacebar and then spacebar while I'm over the side view, you'll notice that, well, my pieces aren't exactly aligned. This is why the orthographic views can be very, very helpful because they can help for you to uh, determine exactly how much more in alignment things need to go in ways that you really can't see in perspective. I'll just angle that down a little bit till it makes it. And there we go. I think that's our first brace. To create the other eight braces, I'm actually just going to do this manually. And we'll see what happens here. I'm going to hit Control D to duplicate, leaving a little space between as you actually see here on these slats. That will be my second brace. I'll hit Control D. I still have the Move tool on, and the Move tool is W. I'll move these out. Now each time, you'll notice that if I go back to the side view by hitting Spacebar, since my chair does diagonal down a little bit, I'm going to have to move these down just a little bit each time. Well, that's three. I could keep duplicating these each individually, but I might as well just select all three, hit Control duplicate and move three out at once. And that would be six. Duplicate my last three. And I will move this down again. And that is nine. Now the problem is that my proportions were just a little bit off, but that's okay. I can tweak this by moving my other brace pieces. To edit these two other sides, I'll just select both of them by holding down Shift while clicking on each piece. If I right-click on each piece now and choose Vertex, I can grab the vertices for the back end of each of these at once and move them both forward. Oops, looks like I missed the other side. Move them both forward, and then F8, my hotkey to toggle out of that, and I've got a sufficiently created base. Now, the last problem that I have with this is if you notice, the height of this seat off the ground looks a little bit low for the size of the chair. Well, I could come in and select these and try moving them all up, and sometimes that'll work, and in this case it actually will. But what you should really start looking at doing is grouping together objects like this and naming them so that they are easily selectable. What we're going to do in the next part of our video is we're going to take a look at using the hypergraph to make sure we have a solid selection of these that are grouped and named appropriately. This has been part two. Stay tuned for part three.